Welcome to another episode of Monday Mod Tips. Today we're going to be covering how to brass a barrel and a breech. We're going to be using 17 30 seconds inch brass. It can be gotten at uh, on Amazon, on eBay, it can be gotten at most hardware stores and hobby shops. I get mine at Hobbytown USA. Uh, they will actually order it in bulk, which is lovely. We use 17 30 seconds. That's the outside diameter because the inside diameter is half inch, which is the diameter of a nerf dart because nerf darts are in fact 50 caliber which is neat I feel it comes in a one foot section usually and it's about five dollars for a one foot section depending on where you get it uh, which is an excellent price because uh, a five foot section or a one foot section will do um, four single barrels the way that I do them if you're just gonna do them the length of a dart you can get four out of a single piece uh, if you're doing longer brass breeches, of course, if you want a really long barrel and you want to ramrod it or you're doing um, an, a, a full sealed breech, you'll need more, of course. But for what we're doing here, just the, a length, uh, the length of a Nerf dart will suffice. Now, you will need to cut it, and there are a couple of ways to do that. You can use a hacksaw. Murder. You can use a hacksaw but uh, it's going to require a lot more cleaning up afterwards because it's somewhat difficult to get a straight cut uh, unless you have uh, a jig. I prefer to use pipe cutters. Uh, my friend John insists on using my bandsaw no matter how many times I ask him not to. The bandsaw does create a nice clean cut. Uh, you do have to clean it up a little bit. The pipe has the downside of it will bevel the pipe in on the ends which is good on one end, but not so good on the other end. But we're going to cover how you actually do the, the cut with a pipe cutter. Open the pipe cutter up, clamp it down on the length that you want. In this case, the length of a dart. Tighten down the pipe cutter until it's fairly tight. And then rotate it, tighten it, rotate it, tighten it, rotate it. Tighten it, rotate it, tighten it, rotate it, tighten it. Ah, lose your end cap. And it comes off nice and clean. But, as you can see, it is beveled in. Now, in this particular case, that's okay because the far end was not beveled, which is good, so the dart will fit into it. And this will act. This end will actually act as a dart stop, which will keep you from accidentally vacuum loading your dart, which is to say sucking the dart into the actual plunger because there's nothing to keep it from being sucked in because we've taken the AR out. And this is bad because then you have to take the whole gun apart to get the dart out, and that's that's a pain. However, if you get the one that is beveled on both ends, we're going to need to unbevel it, and we are in fact going to want to flare this one a little bit. So. There are a couple of ways you can do this. You can just do it with a pair of needle nose pliers by putting them in and twisting it. And it will bend it back out. Brass is soft. Brass is a fairly soft metal. I mean, you can deform it just with your fingers. And this will work, but it doesn't work particularly well. I prefer to use my fancy planishing hammer, which has a ball peen end on it, which happens to be the right size. I can then just put it on, tap it down a little bit. And now not only is it not dished in, it's slightly dished out, which makes it a little bit easier to feed a dart. Less likely to jam or to cut the dart or any of that nonsense. Uh, and we are going to do that on our large section. So first we can just demonstrate if you were going to do it with a pair of pliers, you would just put it in there and push in and twist, and it will flare it slightly. I prefer my hammer, but I doubt very many of you have access to a nice planishing hammer, as it is a somewhat specialized tool. But now we have our barrel is done. That's all we needed to do to prep the barrel. We've got it beveled on the inside, flared on the outside. Very nice. It won't vacuum load. It's easy to load. It won't mar your dart. And now we have to prep the original barrels. Now I have both an example of a 
front loading barrel from a night finder that is slowly but surely sacrificing itself for this series and we also have a breach from i believe a retaliator as one was uh somebody put a uh, uh an immortal kit into theirs this weekend so they actually replaced the whole breach and they are slightly different for this one all you have to do is bore out the barrel enough to get the pipe in there and that's pretty much it if you want to put glue in to seal it a little bit better you can and it's a good idea if you don't have the tools to make the barrel perfectly round again because uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do it we're going to do it the easy way in my opinion though it does require tools that once again you may not have the only tool that you absolutely are going to need is probably going to be some kind of a round file for boring it out um, but you're better off using a drill with the right size drill bit so let's pop over to my drill press and we'll go over that process a common question I get about brassing barrels is why? Why do we do it? And the reason is is that on a standard Nerf barrel, it only has a tight seal for the last half of an inch of the barrel. So from here to here is the only part that is actually holding the dart tight. Everything from here up is loose and the dart will actually just fall out even though it's in the barrel. Brass gives you a full seal for the full length of the dart which means more of the air pressure is being utilized instead of being lost like when it gets to here one the ar kicks in and two the air can escape around the dart so we brass we remove the ar and we brass the full barrel so you get the full pressure for the full length of the dart and it gives it a lot more power it also means that when the if you're using older darts they don't just get pushed out by the ar because they don't have enough tension so we are going to bore out the ar and bore out the barrel so that we can fit the brass in there and I'm going to use my drill press which has a 17 30 seconds inch drill bit on it and yes I'm wearing a glove don't worry I'm not going to turn the drill on I'm actually going to be rotating it manually this just conveniently holds it in place so we are going to thread the barrel on there and manually rotate This is one thing you want to be careful on. Some of the barrels have, of course, tabs that hold the barrel in place, and if you're not careful, you can break them off. I've cracked this one. I haven't broken it off yet. Hopefully, we can avoid that. Now, you may be wondering, why am I doing it by hand instead of turning the drill press on? And that is because when you try to put it in, when it gets to the point where it actually is tight, it will catch and it will rip it out of your hands and you will slice your hands up and it's very unpleasant or if you're holding with some kind of a pliers you will bad things will happen you'll shred plastic break things so i only turn the actual drill press on after i've bored it enough that i can fit it through all the way manually yeah that tab is a gunner but then then I use the actual drill to make sure that it's nice and smooth on the inside. So, that is how we bore out both the AR and the barrel most of the way. We are going to then finish it up with the file. So, back to the desk. Okay. So having bored out the barrel, we're now going to use the round file, which we could have done from the beginning. You could have just um, dremeled out or carved out the uh, dart stop and just used a file. Okay. Now, we simply insert the barrel and hammer it in. I use a rubber-headed mallet, tap it down until it is flush with the back, and then you are done. Quite simple if you have the right tools. Somewhat less simple if you don't, but that's pretty much true for anything we do with Nerf. So that's for a muzzle-loaded barrel, which is definitely the simpler one. You take out the AR, you brass the barrel, you put the spring in, probably gonna need to upgrade the catch spring, and now you've got an excellent sidearm that is both accurate and powerful. So, there is that. Now, an actual magazine breach from any of the, the clip system blasters. This is a much more complicated mechanism, and so it does require a slightly more complicated brass breech. We are still going to want to take out the AR, 
which is more complicated than these. We are going to want to brass the breech, which is considerably more complicated. But the steps are relatively simple. We are going to drill out the AR. We can't go from the back, which would be much easier because between the fact that it gets a little bit narrower and because of this ring, there isn't enough material to drill from the back without shredding it all. So we are going to have to drill from the front. We're going to do that the same way we did previously. Go to the drill press, start it manually, clean it out. Then we're going to, again, murder, use the file to clean it up. So I'm going to go drill it. I'm not going to film it this time. So I've drilled out the barrel, same way I did with the previous one. Started it manually, then use the actual drill to clean it up once I've finished that. And now we just need to take a little file to it, clean it up a little bit more. All right, here is where the difference between a regular breech and a uh, magazine breech really comes into play. We get the barrel all the way down like we normally would. But the magazine breech needs this section up on top to properly feed the dart. So we put the brass in that far, and then we need to cut the brass away. And for that, we're going to use a Dremel. And once again, you could use a hacksaw for some of it and file for more of it, but I highly recommend if you're gonna be doing Nerf modding, get yourself a Dremel and a good cutoff wheel. And this is a time where we definitely want, that's right, eye protection, kids. So we're gonna cut the brass along the line so that we can get it out and then we're gonna clean it up with some files so all right so that's the main cuts done now we use files to clean it up I have a very nice set of diamond grit files got a nice round pointed one a half dome one, and a square one, all for different parts. Now what is imperative is that you file it so that there are no sharp edges, because otherwise it will eat your darts up. So we want to make sure that all of it is smooth and slightly flared, as with before. The final touch is I would highly recommend just a little bit of super glue along this top tab to keep it from bending down on you. All right, now you have what is, I believe, referred to as a sleeper breach because there is no easy way for somebody to tell that you've put a brass breach into a clip system blaster. I, for one, do not hold with the idea of making blasters that don't look modified, or at least if you are gonna do that, tell the people that it's been modified because they have the right to know what they're about to be shot with. Uh, so. That's how you do it, and believe it or not, this is the first one I've ever done! And I don't even have a blaster to put it in! I'm gonna have to do a retaliator mod now, just so I can put this in. Or I'll give it to John, he can always use another sleeper breach. Anyway, that is how you do brass breaches, or at least that's how I do them. If you know of any better ways, better tools, better, especially better tools for cutting the brass um, here, I would love to know, absolutely love to know. Let me know in the comments below, let me know what, what videos you'd like to see next. I think next I will do AR removal. Put your comments in the comment section. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.